and he was telling us that the main oh, fuck. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Clueless Drinker. Last night I was at a beer tasting event at Beretta for the Rana Brewery to showcase the uh, 1904 Pale Mertzen. And I just thought they were going to be letting people sample that beer, but they actually had quite a lot of their range, just people, you know, just to help themselves. It was a really great atmosphere. Um, I was talking to Aloy, who is actually from the brewery, um, and of course, people from Beretta. And I met uh, an Australian guy called Tom, um, who some of you may know if you follow like beer podcasts. He's part of the Sessionables podcast back in Australia. So I was talking to him for most of the night, just talking about some of our favourite beers, uh, our experience so far with German craft beer. And yeah, it was a really great night, great atmosphere. Uh, everyone was friendly, everyone was having a nice time. They just kept lifting beers out of the fridge, putting them on the table for people to just help themselves. And uh, yeah, it was an absolutely fantastic event. Um, I had to leave a bit earlier because I had my German language class. So, you know, I was a bit merry, you know, riding on the streets of Regensburg. Fantastic evening. They even had like a cheese board and bread and some meat so you couldn't it was just a great atmosphere all around very look, much looking forward to the next event that they hold picked up uh some swag obviously uh just a bit of information about the beers um i tried the oak aged bock which was out of this world it was absolutely fantastic you could definitely pick up the like the barrel in the bock but it wasn't too much it was very nicely balanced. The alcohol was masked really nicely. So full of flavour. And uh, yeah, tried a few of their other beers. Um, and they also have a really nice uh, Vice Bock. Which was, you know, just a great tasting beer. Every beer that I had at the event was absolutely gorgeous. So, I picked up a bottle of the beer that they were promoting. Or at least I think it was to promote the beer. And uh, yeah, this is the 1904 Pale Mertzen, which is clocking in at 5.6%. And uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic artwork. I absolutely love good graphic design. And uh, yeah, I was talking to Tom, and uh, he's the same as me. We sometimes gravitate towards the more interesting looking labels, because if you've put time and money into the labeling and the marketing of your beer then you're going to be proud of that beer i mean that's not always the case that's slightly snobby there are some really quite blandly promoted and designed beers that taste absolutely fantastic but um yeah i was absolutely blown away by this artwork and i'll definitely be being a sad bastard and taking the label off when i finished and when i first saw the beer as much as I really enjoyed the design, I was like, why are they using, you know, a Native American woman to promote it? And we are actually talking to one of the guys from the brewery, Aloe, and he was telling us that the hop that they use, which is Simcoe, is from the Yakima Valley in America. And uh, yeah, so it all made real sense. So anyway, I've had this in the fridge for a little while, and uh, yeah, looking forward to doing a review of this one. Um, from what I can remember of last night because I was just like in the middle of a conversation going to the table pouring whatever bottle I could find it all just like merged into one nice tasty you know, experience but yeah really enjoyed this beer and I was like I don't know they're taking a style that I really like well two styles that I really like the pale and the mertz and, and they're putting them together so I was intrigued at how they uh, did that so, um, yeah, looking forward to doing a proper analysis of this one. So, I'll pour it into the glass. And that is pouring really nicely so far. Could I get all of that in there? Yeah, we'll just get it all in. And, uh, yeah, beer in a glass. A very pretty beer indeed. It's got, like, a nice golden amber colour. Uh, it's a tiny, tiny bit hazy, 
not too much. Really nice active carbonation there. And uh, yeah, if you put it into the light, you're getting those golden hues in there. And uh, yeah, poured with just under one tiny finger's worth of slightly off-white head. But uh, yeah, that's a very pretty looking beer indeed. So anyway, on with the sniff. And that's really nice and fruity. You get an apricot in there. Mango, you get those tropical elements. It's just really nice and zesty. Not too much. It's like nicely balanced. And yeah, that just smells really, really nice. Smells like a really good pale ale. And you're getting those like slightly caramelized malts as well from, I'm guessing, the Mertz inside. I don't really know hops too well. Uh, there are some hops where you can give them to me, I won't be able to detect them. But the Simcoe hop, and I, I have had a couple of experiences where you do pick up almost like a, a slightly cleaning industrial scent uh, mixed with cat litter, almost border on cat litter, and it can be really quite overwhelming. But it's really nicely subdued in this beer. Really nice smelling beer. So inviting. So nice and fresh. It's crisp. It's zesty. You've got those nice tropical fruits in there. So let's get it tasted. Cheers. Oh, it's so nice. I have found that in some pale ales, as nice as they are, it almost kind of tastes and gives off a smell of soap like a hand wash or something like that. But this is really, really nice and fruity. And drinking this now and being able to properly analyze it, I am getting those like multi-tones in the background as well. Like those Mertzen style flavors that you get. You're also getting that in the body. You get like a nice, full body, not too full, it's not a heavy beer by any stretch, but it's a bit heavier than your typical pale ale. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice mixture of the two styles. Not one style is overwriting the other. And it's a really nice example of a bridge between the two styles. So if you're a fan of either style, you're gonna get something from this. It's a very, very tasty beer. Really nice high quality to it. It's got a nice bitterness throughout, not too much, but it's there, and it rests really nicely. And even as chilled as this is, I'm still getting those flavours. And it is one of probably the fruitiest pale ales that I've tried here in Germany. As much as I've liked the German pale ales that I've had, they can be rather subdued. Uh, but this is an absolutely stellar example of both styles put into one. Uh, it's leaning more, ever so slightly, on the pale side. You're getting that, that more in the sniff. You're getting that more in the main flavours. But it's got that nice, warming body of a Mertzen. And it's got that almost celebratory aspect to it. It's nice and hoppy, nice and fruity. It's got a nice bitterness to it. It's definitely one of the best pails that I've tried in a hell of a long time. From what I've found, when established German breweries go into the more craftier side of things, they have it as their manufacturer line. And I think that's, first of all, that's great that some of these established breweries, I think Rana is the oldest brewery that isn't a cluster brewery. And it's great to see them branching out this way and doing such a great job that being experimental, they're going for it straight away, they're not holding back, they're going for that style, and I think they've done an absolutely stellar job with this one. You've got that rather nice craftsmanship of the German breweries, I mean, no one can hold a candle to Germany when it comes to brewing, in my opinion. They've got that history, they've got that cultural heritage, it's a true art form, and they're embracing these new styles, and new trends and all that sort of thing and they're trying exciting things and this is one of the best examples of it. Some people might not like the Mertzen side of this beer but if you want to try German craft beer then definitely give this a go because it's an absolutely fantastic little beer. So I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. 
we're going to have uh, egg fried rice and I think this is going to complement that perfectly. So uh, yeah, it's an 8.5 out of 10. In fact, no, I'm going to give it a 9. It looks great. The bottle's great. It's got a nice smell to it. It tastes fantastic. It's really nice and sessionable. Uh, even though we're coming towards winter now, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this tonight. It's going to go great with the cuisine that we're having as well. So it's a 9 out of 10 for me. I'm really, really happy with this one. And uh, yeah, if you want to find out more about Rana and their Manufactor line, as well as the other beers that they do, 